Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to my talk, Micronaut, uh, Dragon Slayer, or just another framework. Thank you for choosing this talk. I know there's a lot of talks happening at the same time, so thank you for choosing this one. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Vladimir Dejanovic. This is my Twitter, mail, blog, GitHub account. Uh, I'm a part of professional IT scene since 2006. In other words, I'm getting paid for developing software since 2006. Uh, I'm founder and leader of Amsterdam Java User Group, and beside this, I'm giving talk at conferences. Also, I'm Java One Rockstar and Code One Star. But enough about me. What this talk is going to be about. First, I'm going to actually talk a little bit about motivation for this talk and why I actually decided to actually give it. And then, majority of the talk is going to be live coding, uh, basically with the Micronaut and Spring Boot, and hopefully everything goes good. <laughs> we'll see. And then there will be some time for questions. So. Please wait with any questions until the end. Uh, before I start, I want to just give a few disclaimers. Uh, first thing is I really like Spring and Spring Boot, and I'm a heavy user of both of them, so this is not going to be a trash talk about them. You know. Uh, also, I'm not involved in developing either Spring or Spring Boot, so like I'm not a contributor to them, so I'm, I'm kind of have independent look on, on it. I'm a user from the user point of view. Similar thing for the Micronaut. So I'm just a user. I'm not like involved in any of these frameworks, so you know, I should be independent, so to say, not opinionated. Also, all the things that I will share is from my own personal experience, so take them with a grant of salt. So, why should even, like, you know, why should even we care about this? Uh, well, if today you decide to actually build some application, there are two ways that we can actually approach this. We can either go with library and uh, toolkit away, or we can go with the framework approach. If we go with the library and toolkits, then we can, for example, choose Vertex, which is toolkit for building reactive applications on top of JVM, and it's a very, very good one, and I really like to use it. Or we can go with the Red Pack, which is basically the set of libraries, again, which is giving us a lot of things to do. Or if we go with the pure framework approach, we can go with Jakarta EE, or of course, like everybody well known like Spring, or today even now, like Micronaut, right. But what's the big difference between these two approaches? The big difference is that if we go with the library and toolkit approach, we have much more freedom and choices of what, how we want to build stuff, but we need to be able to actually you know, assemble the whole application in a good way, that everything works in a good way. With a framework, a lot of things are already done for us. Somebody already took a lot of decisions, made already like the framework, like it says, right? And we just needed to follow that path, and everything will be you know, perfect and nice. So. When we come to the people, basically, when the people see this choice, okay, should we go library toolkit approach or the framework approach? Majority of the people choose framework, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, the only thing that you need to know is just the framework, so if you're a new guy, a new person on a project, it's easy to actually you know, be productive. It's also like if you hand over to somebody, the only thing that they need to do is framework. They, know, they need to know only framework. Also, developer productivity is much, much faster, so you can with a framework, you can put something in production much faster and easier than if you go with the library and toolkit approach. Again, like if you're on a very high level, you may also do it very fast with libraries and toolkit, but the majority of the people attend basically choose frameworks. And the most popular one is, of course, Spring and Spring Boot. And again, that's a very good reason for that. Uh, that is that Spring and Spring Boot is really like very powerful and magical dragon. It has a lot of powers and magic and do all kind of stuff for us. The ecosystem is huge. User base is huge. Whatever you actually try to build, there is something in the Spring ecosystem that actually will help you do that in a very easy way. However, all that power doesn't come without the price because there nothing comes for free. So Spring does a lot, lot for us, but it does a lot of, for us in a runtime. does a lot of reflection on all those kind of things. So we need to pay with the memory, of course, because all those basically objects need to live somewhere. Because it needs to do a lot of stuff in runtime, of course, we need to pay the price with the CPU. Again, we need to pay with the startup time of our application, because on it, when we actually start up the Spring application, the Spring will actually do all the scanning of our code, doing injections, reflections, and all the kind of stuff. And that will slow down, basically, our application to start up. Another pay price that we need to pay is, at the moment, GraalVM. I'm not sure if you, how many people know about GraalVM. Okay, so I don't, don't need to go into details what Graal VM is. As far as I know, so far, Spring has problems to work with Graal VM. I know that Oracle and Spring people are actually working very hard on you know, making the leap and making this work, but at the, at the moment, it doesn't work out of the box. So is there a solution to all of this? So basically, get something which has all the power of Spring and Spring Boot, but none of these prices. Well, according to the Micronaut team, yes, there is. It's a Micronaut, because what they say, we do all of those things that Spring does in runtime, we do in compile time, so then everything of those things works. 
So I'm not sure about you, but you know, I'll tend to like, you know, check for things myself. Like I saw a lot of basically demos of the Micronaut, and they were all very, very good, very nice, but they were all done by people who actually developed Micronaut. So of course they're going to show nice and beautiful stuff, right? Who's going to show the demo of something that doesn't work? So let's actually do our challenge. So the challenge is very simple that I'm going to actually show you. So I want to actually build REST API, because I think that's the most common thing that people want to do. Also, of course, I want to have a database, because without database, you know, what's the point? I want to have also the service from the code organization point of view, because I like to have like layers in my code so that I can organize my code in a nicer way. So I don't, I don't care how it's going to be called, I just want that functionality. Also, I want to basically be able to create the whole website basically in that framework. So I, that's why I also need some templating engine for HTML. And last but not the least, security. Security people will love this when they see it on, in the end, right? Security is not an add-on. But we also want to have security. So first of all, let's look at Spring Boot solution. So this is already coded so that we spend less time on it. But what we always want, what we do when we have uh, the Spring Boot, we go to like start, start.spring.io, right? Basically, we select here, OK, what's the package name? And then we add dependencies like web. We add the lomb with that web, right? We add Lombok because we're lazy. We add H2 for the database. Uh, we, can, we add time leaf. Uh, we can add also security, right? And we can add what else uh, I need? Uh, hey, JPI, yeah, JPI. And then we download it and we basically can code. So I already did this here. And let's see what actually I put here. So I put here very simple like bookstore. So basically I have a pojo of the of the book, right? And I have an ID, I have a title, I have data from the long box, so they get getters and setters and other stuff for free. And I have entity, because it's a table, right? Then I have repository, which is just book repository, extends JPA repository, it's all standard stuff that you should probably know. We have entity book, ID long, repository, that's it. Then like I said, I have a service. And again, in this case, Spring Boot data does all the magic for me. So all the find, save, update, delete, all the stuff is done for me. I write almost zero code. Then we have book service, right? Here we have, of course, add annotation service. We auto-inject book repository. We have here get all books. We have add book, so that we have some functionality. We have web, which is the controller. Here is, of course, simple REST controller for the REST API. I inject book service. Here I have on slash books, I will get all books, and on get I'm going to add the data. You know, this is not production, this is just a stupid demo, so don't kill me, please. Uh, it's basically request, admin book, and then we're going to add the book. So like I said, uh, I also want to have security. So here basically I have simple configuration for security, which, which I'm saying, okay, in the case of slash books, it's going to be open to everybody, so anybody can actually see the data, but in order to actually add anything, you basically, like slash admin, you have to be authenticated. So here I have security implemented. Last but not the least, I also said I want to have some templating engine for the front end. So I have it here. Basically, it's a simple login page, so it's not nothing fancy, but you know, proof of concept that it exists. So I'm using here time leaf, and here I have simple controller that actually, you know, on slash login will just return the view name of the login. So that's it. Basically, all the checkboxes are done for the basically my challenge, and of course, I'm using H2 so in memory database. So let's first let's see. Uh, I need to go to Bookstore Spring Boot. Let's build the code, and this should take not not a lot of time. So it built in 11 seconds. Let's try to remember these num numbers. And let's then now start jar minus jar target bookstore. Let's now run it. So we built in 11 seconds, roughly, on my machine. And it should start in like maybe 15 seconds, something like that, roughly, if my memory serves me right. So it started in 17 seconds. I need this password later. OK, so now we can actually test this. So if I go here and just say localhost, 80 books, 
I should get nothing because there is nothing here. But then if I say, okay, the admin, uh, admin book title 1Q84, we add a book, basically say, okay, you have to log in. I say user, right? The password, which actually Spring Boot gen auto generated for me. Now I'm logged in, basically, and now I added the book. If I say here books, I get the data back. So yeah, I forgot actually to make this bigger, sorry. So everything works, perfect. So that is done, right? Spring Boot done. Micronaut is also online, but let's actually now do the coding online, basically live. So in the case of, uh, of a Micronaut, there is no start.spring.io. So we have to do it differently. First thing first, we need to install SDK, SDK man. So we need to install oops, SDK man .com. Oops, it's not that one. Okay. Ah. You see, like I said, it's live coding is always interesting. You know, like if you go some, if I do something wrong, so oh, IO. Okay, so SDK man IO. So basically, first you need to install this. Then when you install this, then you can say click SDK list. And then you get the list of all the things that you can install and you find here Micronaut. And then it says, okay, you have to install SDK install Micronaut. When you actually do that, then you can actually see which one do you have. So in my case, I already have it. So it's already installed. So I can actually run and use it. So with Micronaut actually you say MN and then you go enter and we can ignore these warnings because I'm using Java 11. Basically here, if you put help, you will see all the options that you can actually do. So you can see, okay, how can you create application, do all kind of stuff. So basically what start the Spring IO actually does for us in the web, this does for us in a console. One thing that I want to show you here is profile info. <coughs> service. And basically then when you say profile info service, you get all here like things that you actually Micronaut already supports out of the box for you. So you have like service discovery, you have Hibernate JPI, you have securities, you have you know all kind of crazy stuff. It's it's a lot, a lot of lot of stuff here. So let's now actually exit this one. Let's create app. Let's call it bookstore, but let's call it oops, let's first get, get out of this directory. I mean create app bookstore, but let's call it micronaut. Uh, minus, uh, by default, if you just start in create application, it's going to use a Gravel, Gradle. But if you want to use Maven, you just add minus minus build Maven, and then it will be using Maven. Then you can add features. And then here you can say hey, security, security session, hibernate JPA. And with this, basically, I'm going to add security and hibernate JPA to to the skeleton application of the Micronaut. So now I just need for it. Okay, so it's done. Uh, let me just exit from this one. Okay, let me open the Micronaut application. So it's here. Open the project. And let me basically also do the copy paste of the book because I'm going to need it. Okay, so I'm here. Oops. Come on. Okay, so we have now by uh, micron application. So let's see what we actually have here. So of course we have dependencies in POM already done for us. I'm going to delete the test because I don't want to be influenced by them in this test case. By the way, Micronaut is very good when it comes to the testing. It supports JUnit and Spock out of the box. Uh, so first thing first, you, you can see already I have like logback already set up for me. I have application which is already set up for me with the name, book. I also have like H2 database already set up. I also have a setup security, which I'm going to comment for now because I want to first to run it with, without security. And then basically here, if you go, let's just rename this, basically refactor, rename. Shark. Talk. Uh, bookstore. Not. Hope it didn't do any typos. Okay, so basically now, 
we rename the package and let's see basically what we have. Well, we should not have a lot. We just have a simple application, which is like Microtron application class. Almost exactly the same like the Spring Boot. So let's now actually add some stuff. So let's first add the Pojo. So let's add book. I don't want to end it here. So now I can just do the copy paste from which I already had there. Okay. So in this case, uh, I'm not going to use the Lombok. And the reason why I'm not going to use the Lombok is because the Lombok actually, in during the runtime, uh, generates a lot of stuff for you. Uh, Micronaut does the same thing. So basically, sometimes the Lombok and Micronaut actually cl cl clash to one another. So I just found some people that actually says, okay, we managed to make it work at the same time, but for them, I just didn't want to bother. So I'm, I'm just going to create getters and setters, and I'm done. So now let's create basically a new package for controller. And let's actually create a controller book controller. So book book controller. Okay, so what I need to do basically here is just add annotation controller. So now it's almost exactly the same like the Spring Boot, right? Then I need to add get, get annotation micronaut. I'm going to say slash books. And I'm going to say public list book get all and say return. And now I need to basically add service, right? So let's import this one. Let's also import this one. So basically, now I also need a service, right? So let's add package service. Let's, say let's add book service. In case of a micron, basically, you just add singleton and that's it. And then you, it's instead of like the service that we use in the case of the Spring Boot. So basically, with the singleton, we say, okay, it's only one instance of this class. That's it. Now, actually, I can go back to the book controller and now I can inject it here. So I can say private uh, book service, book service. And the standard way how you actually inject stuff in the micronaut is basically through the constructor. So you say book controller service book service and say this book service is book service you can also do uh, add inject so you can also do that way but you can also do it for it's perf the preferred way is doing the, those kind of things for the constructor so that's why I'm going to do it for the construct constructor and then see here, here I'm going to say book service book service uh, find all of course, I need to add this method there. Let's not define it for now. And we need to add one more thing. We need also need to be able to add data through the get. I can't believe that I'm saying that. But demos, you know, and what can you do? Book. Public, we're going to return book. Uh, add book. It's going to be string. Uh, title, title, and this is query. Query value. That's it. And then we're going to see here return uh, book service, add book title. That's it. Now let's actually no, add this to also to method here. So now basically we need to add here a repository, right? Which is actually going to do integration with the database. So add, let's pack to repository. Okay, so let's add book repository. Repository, if you know how to type. Okay, again, the same thing like we did last time at Singleton, right? That's it. Uh, book service. Okay, where's book service? Book service. Okay, it's going to be just return. Okay, we just need to inject it here. So we again, we say private book repository, book repository. We inject it during through the constructor, book service. Repository, book repository. Uh, we say this that book, uh, this book repository is equal book repository. Yes, and then here I just say uh, return book repository find all. Of course, I need to create it there. We'll create it. In. Okay, where is where is this one still red? So it shouldn't be red anymore. Ah, 
Okay. Uh, book repository, book service. Uh, okay, we added this one here. We here also add return book repository, add book, book title. We add it, create method, cool. Added it. So now basically the only thing left is for us to actually define here. So we need here to and add entity manager, entity manager, entity manager. Uh, we need to uh, annotate it with persistent consistence. Persistence constant, yeah. This one, yes. Persistent. Yes, persistent context, yes. Then we need to add private final application configuration, application configuration. Again, we inject all those things through the constructor. Public book repository. Uh, current session, entity manager, entity manager. Uh, Application configuration, application configuration. Oops, I did something wrong. Okay, so now it's good. Now we say this dot entity manager is entity manager. Uh, this dot uh, application configuration is application configuration. Yes, then here we just add transactional, transactional from the micronaut, transactional from the micronaut, read only is equal true because we're only reading data, right? So let's create a string. Uh, SQL is let's be is select o o from book as o. That's it. Then we say entity manager create query uh, create query with s SQL uh, book dot class. Let's actually define this. As a query, okay, okay, and then we say just return query, query, command, we're going to type, okay, uh, get result list. So that's it. Now, basically, for the book, and in the book, we say book, book is new book, and then we say book, set title, title. Okay, I'm still good on time. Last time I was out of time when I was practicing. Okay, so then we say uh, entity manager persist book MC return book and that's it. In theory, this should work. How many of you think that this is going to work? Hands up. Okay, I have one sympathy vote. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll, let's see if this is going to work. In theory, it should. Okay, it doesn't work because. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm in wrong directory. Yeah, so bookstore or micro. Yes, now it now it will work. But see, like that's why live coding is always interesting, right? If everything goes terribly wrong, like it's always fun. Like, I'm sweating on, on, on here, like you know, trying to do it everything in time. And by the way, maybe I'm going too fast, but I d I'm doing this very fast because when I timed myself, so I needed like an hour. So. Am I going too fast? Okay, cool. So, look one thing. So, Spring Boot compiled in 11 seconds on my machine. This compiled in 18. So basically, this is slower. And again, this is because actually Micronaut does a lot of things during the compile time. So let's see when, what actually what goes when I, we run it. So we go with Java, target, uh, bookstore. So if I remember correctly, Spring Boot was 17 seconds, something like that. So this one is in seven seconds. So you see the difference. Compile time is longer, but the start time is much, much, much faster. Okay, so let's check actually if everything works. So localhost, books. Well, there is no books here, right? No, no, no books here. Okay, and if we try to edit now, it should work because basically I don't have any security at the moment. Title is uh, one, two, eight, four. Oops. Oh yeah, because I forgot one thing, you see. I forgot to actually that here, transactional. Transactional, so now it's going to actually, now it should work. So whoever, so you see like it was a good thing to doubt me. Actually I had the same problem when, when actually when I, when I so hopefully now all is good. Now I didn't forget anything. Now there's like 
intersectional in all the places. But the good thing is the only thing I need now to add after this is security, that's it. By the way, uh, the code online is divided in, in, in the branches, so basically you can very easily see okay, like how we go from one branch to another. So it's like it's really like divided in a nice way. Okay, so let's try it now again. And yeah, now it works, perfect, so we can actually kill it. Now, uh, the thing what we still need to do is, of course, we need to add security. Uh, so basically first, uh, and uh, I need to add basically the templating. So here then, uh, actually I need to go here to application, I need to uncomment this one. I need to go to my pump and I need to basically add some dependencies. So first dependency which I need to add is micronaut view. Uh, Views and also another thing which I need to add as dependency is basically time leaf. Yes, and now that when I added this, I go to resources. Here I create a new directory called views. So I'm not going to actually code HTML now because I, I really don't want to spend time on it. Uh, so I can I already have it prepared. Uh, resource uh, main resources views. Okay, and I have one more. Basically, I have, I think it's called login. Let me just check. No, home, 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 yes, home. So I have home. Also, I have prepared actually some uh, some uh, more things here. Uh, because again, I don't want to basically spend a lot of time on it. It's, it's very simple, so I have like a login controller, which I'm going to copy to source main uh, resources, uh, not resources, source main Java. Controller, and also I have another controller called I think Home Controller. No, it's uh, yes, Home Controller. Yes, Home Controller versus main Java conf talk extra micronaut controller. So basically, that's it. Uh, before I show you this code, I also need to add actually security. So I'm going to add simple authentication provider. Plus, okay, I'm going to call it as a singleton. Singleton, I'm going to implement uh, authentication provider, yes. So here I'm just going to basically create a dummy user and, and, and password. It's going to be very, very simple, so I'm just going to say if uh, authentication provider uh, get identity equals, equals user and authentication provider uh, get secret equals password, so it's like very complicated to guess. I'm just going to say return global just new user details. Yes, new user details of user. User here is new array, array list. Import, please. Yes, that's it. And in the case if I don't do the good login, I'm just going to say return, return, flowable, flowable, just new. Oh, oops, where, where, did, where the hell did I go? Authentication field. Yes, that's this one. See, I like autocomplete. So basically, this is my configuration based security. I'm going to say, okay, if somebody wants to log in, I'm going to ask okay, his username, user, password, password, that's it. As you remember, I added two things. Basically, I added a very simple home page, basically, which is actually, again, in time lift, and it's going to say, okay, is the user logged in or not? If it's logged in, okay, you're logged in. If, you can be, if you're not logged in, you can log in and just click the link. I have a simple login page, again, created in, uh, in the time lift. So it's just you know, proof of concept. I added uh, the home login, the home controller, Basically, which, as you can see here, is secured with, with Anonymous. So basically, here is one way how you can secure your stuff. Here, I basically added the view. And also, I have a login controller, which actually has, okay, like, login failed, login succeeded. I'm going to actually update my login here to see, okay, if, if it's failed, I'm going to login slash authentication failed. And the last but not the least, I need to actually go to my book controller. And now, actually, I need to protect my endpoint. So I'm going to say here, security, secured secured and here i'm going to say security 
security rule, rule yes, is anonymous, so anybody can actually access this one. And I can go here basically and say okay, is secure is basically is authenticated. Come on, is authenticated. And that's it. So let's actually now build the code. Let's see if this works or not. Uh, by the way, you can do security in multiple ways. So you can do it like I did here through annotations. You can do it through the uh, basically property file. You also don't have to use micronauts uh, anno annotations. You can use basically the standard JSR annotations from the Java. Everything will work. So there are like multiple ways how actually you can do it. Okay, so this one is compiling. Oh, I'm perfect with time. I was worried that I'm not going to ma manage, but I actually managed to like, even kill it so I can slow down. Uh, bookstore, was it wasn't fast or was it too fast? No? Okay. So now let's start it and let's see again. It should start again. It starts again in seven seconds. So if I go basically again to books, I get nothing because I don't have anything. But if I now say, okay, let's add something, admin, uh, book, title, Title is equal after dark. Then I'm going to say, okay, like you're not logged in, log in. So I'm going to log in with the user password. Okay, so I didn't do it right. User password. Yes, I, logged, I logged in from the second time, like always. Uh, admin book, let's add title after dark. And basically, we have it here, and we go books. Voila, so everything works. Everything is perfect. Uh, so let's actually look at now at some things. So basically, uh, like I said, everything is going to be different for you and for me because, again, like you know, I run on my own laptop. By the way, I'm using uh, Java 11, and it's a very powerful laptop. So if we look at the build times, roughly build time from a spring, in multi for multiple running, it took me about 10 seconds. Maybe sometimes more, sometimes less. Micronaut took me almost sometimes 21 seconds. Again, the reason why, because Micronaut does a lot of things basically during the compile time. All the reflections or injections, everything is done in a run, basically in compile time with a Micronaut, so this isn't a surprise to me. When it comes to the startup time, well, Again, on my laptop, this demo application roughly took the around 15 seconds for a Spring Boot. Micronaut took 7.1 seconds. Again, because Spring actually does a lot of stuff for us during the run, basically startup time, it doesn't come as a surprise that basically Micronaut was faster in starting up. So I would say start Micronaut wins here. What about memory? Because if you remember all the prices that we were paying, we were basically going now through them. So basically it was memory, CPU, startup time, Graal, VM. So with the memory, again, I didn't touch any setting, any configuration, any flags, anything. So basically, of course, if you play with them, it, it, you will get different numbers. So basically, I just you know, took okay, as it is and run it, and that's it, without any changes. With the Spring Boot, basically, I got 190 megabytes. With the Micronaut, I got 80 megabytes, which is a big difference. But again, it, this is without any tweaking or anything. So if you tweak, no you will get uh, normal different n numbers. So I would say the Micronaut wins. And again, this doesn't come as a surprise to me because again, Micronaut does a lot of stuff in compile time, so after that it's just running the code. It doesn't have to like keep all the reflections and proxies in memory and all other stuff. Uh, regarding the CPU, uh, this was kind of funny. So this is the Visual VM from the Spring Boot application. And this is how it looked like from the Micronaut Visual VM. So from my point of view, is like, eh? I don't know. But I would say the, uh, basically that the, my test application probably isn't the best one to actually test this one. So like fr from basically from my test application, the answer is like I have no clue. But if I think basically think about the things that I know about the Spring Boot and things you know about the Micronaut, basically the way how they work, internal things and things like that, I would say that Micronaut should probably win. But again, like from my test, you know, you don't see. But again, it, it is a very simple test. Uh, now it comes to the Graal VM. So 
I must be honest, I never played with Graal VM with the Micronaut or with the Spring Boot. However, I would say that the Micronaut wins because very simple reason. I saw a lot and a lot of demos of Micronaut with the Graal VM. I still haven't seen a single demo of a Spring Boot with Graal VM. Actually, I heard that basically they're like almost finished basically making sure that Spring Boot works with Graal VM, but again, like I haven't really seen it, so because of that, I'm taking like Graal VM win. Actually, Micronaut win, but you know. That doesn't mean that that's absolute truth. So it's basically just according to my knowledge. So let's now actually go to the last and most important fun thing, basically the challenge. So the challenge which actually I presented to you might look very simple and very silly, but I think that you know, I covered basically the mo majority of the most important things that we actually have in our day-to-day -day life. Basically, we have REST APIs, we, we have connection to the databases, we have basically some services because we don't just do the CRUD, we do a little bit more complex logics. Sometimes we still need to basically you know, host the whole website, so we need to sometimes provide with the pages, and of course we need to have security. So challenge is silly, but again, it covered the, most bi the biggest use case, so to say. I would say the boat were great, really. Like both met, met the challenge. Like I managed to do all the things that I wanted to do, both in Spring Boot and both in Micronaut. However, I would also have to say that in my mind, Spring Boot wins here, but it wins just a little bit. And the reason why it wins is, well, let me show you, because of this thing here. Okay. So who wants to write this code? Let's be honest. I'm not really fun of writing this kind of code. Like I prefer the way that actually I have it with the Spring Boot, where I just slam one annotation and basically I get all the finders, updates, everything out of the box. If I need a query, I just you know write a simple like one-line query and basically the Spring Spring and basically Spring Data does everything for me. So I prefer person that way. So that's why I'm saying like in this case, Spring Boot wins, but just a little bit. Okay, so we're coming now to the end of the talk. So basically, what's the conclusion? What should you actually do? Because again, like if we look into all the things that we basically looked here, in most of them, basically, Micronaut win and really win very good, right? So does it mean actually that you should basically throw your code, which you actually have, and completely rewrite in the Micronaut, right? So like throw everything that you have now and go Micronaut root? Well, my answer is definitely no. Keep your current code. Basically, there's a very good reason that your current code is very good already, especially if it's like in Spring or Spring Boot or in uh, Jakarta E or some other very good framework. So it's already running, it's very good, so why, why change it? Don't change it. Unless you really, really have some very good reason to say, okay, like if we go micro to the root, basically we're going to get some benefits that we actually we don't have with the current stack. So for a current code base, I would say, okay, keep whatever it is, unless it's terrible, then like, then move away from it. But if you're going with a new Greenfield project, then I would say definitely you know, take a micro into, uh, into account. Uh, basically, I went skeptical into actual Micronaut and looking into what Micronaut can offer. Because again, when somebody comes to on the stage and says, okay, it's all perfect, everything is like unicorns and flowers, I tend to, okay, like there is some dark secret behind. I haven't found it. So basically, I looked in, in what basic documentation is awesome. Tutorials are very, very good. It's on a very, very high level. It's very mature. Like, I didn't expect that maturity level. Basically, it's like, it's, if you don't, don't know anything about it, you, you just go, you read a few things, and basically, you're done. Uh, they already covered, basically, Cassandra, Kafka, service discovery, like, all kind of things, basically, whatever you can think of, all this is almost already there. So they took a very good approach, basically, building everything from the bottom up and looking, okay, what's the most most people use? Okay, let's concentrate on this one. Basically, when that is done, let's go on the next thing and the next thing, and they just constantly add and add, and add new stuff. Also, I know that add, they added also, like recently, gRPC, they added basically uh, the GraphQL, so basically they're going, the speed and which, which they're going is like just phenomenal. And quality and, pr and basically documentation is re also very awesome. So for any kind of new project, I would definitely recommend looking into Micronaut. Merci. Uh, this is the references, basically the code uh, that they used. You have both like Micronaut and Spring Boot application, also like the Micronaut website and the Spring Boot uh, also website. Any questions? Yep.
the GTE to, to manage the persistence and the database uh, Okay, so uh, the question is basically, I said, okay, if it's a new new Greenfield project, you can use Micronaut, but again, because of, of the repository, you have to write it your own, it will it be like, you know, the negative point. I would say no, So from the, but that's again my personal opinion. So I would say no, because again, there are ways that you can actually optimize it so you, you don't have to like rewrite it all the time all over, all over a place. Basically, you can use like templates and other things. And I remember, I would like to know, but long, long, long time ago, basically, you know, First time, actually, when I encountered Spring, at that time, uh, the Spring data wasn't that good anyway. So you will still need to do all those kind of things. I remember that basically there was like some guy in my company wrote, wrote like two classes and basically did the majority of the work for you. Basically, that you just, you know, say, okay, like for, for this basically class, you get all the fine, get update, save, and delete. It's, it's not really that difficult of a code. So you can, add it, again, it's, I also would prefer it just, you know, like you just implement the interface and that's it. But again, it's, it's not really, I wouldn't say that's a major reason why not to go with the micro. Because again, you get performance, you get speed, you get less CPU, you, you get le less memory, you get faster startup times. Also with the micro, you can also go with the serverless. You, you can do like really ridiculous amount of stuff with it. So it's, I would say, yeah, that's a dent, dent in, the, in the armor of a micro. But I wouldn't say that, at least for me, that wouldn't be a reason why not to use it. But again, maybe your use case is different. So does that answer your question? Uh, sir, can you repeat the question? Is there any kind of pre-loading when the ISO recognizes? Oh, so you, you mean like is, uh, the question is, if I understand correctly, is there some way that automatically recompile the code, or or no? Or no? I'm not sure that I'm following your question. Yeah, you have to again when you compile the code. Well, uh, you also need to recompile the code. In, so I'm, I'm not sure that follow, I'm not sure that following the question because. Oh, so, so the question is, okay, like in, with Spring Boot, basically there are dev tools that will actually, okay, automatically reload your code. Is there something like this with the Micronaut? To be honest with you, I have no clue. So maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I, I really don't know. But again, like, in most cases, basically, that's not really that big of a deal, at least for me. But again, any other questions? Uh, okay, so the question basically is basically the biggest advantage of a micronaut would be ability to use GraalVM to actually create a native image and why I didn't show it. I didn't show it because there's a lot of demos already of that happening. And again, I think that, at least that's my personal opinion, that majority of us here, when we develop, actually go to the work and develop something, we don't develop native images yet. At least that's my opinion. How many people actually develop here native images for production? So nobody. So. So that's the reason why. Actually, I, I want basically, and okay, how many of you basically built something like application which is showed in production, but of course more complex level? So, okay, so I was, uh, basically that, that's, that's the reason why I chose this. Because again, like I saw the demos of Micronaut with GraalVM, I showed all kind of Micronaut with basically with serverless, all those kind of things. I didn't really see, okay, if you're like starting to build application from the beginning to the end, how to do it. So for example, uh, the thing that CLI tool, that was a surprise for me. Because I didn't see it in demos. And then I was like, okay, there is not start not Spring IO. So basically it's a little bit different. Then I basically are starting and it was okay, like it's grad Gradle. And I, I personally don't like Gradle, I prefer Maven. So then I was okay, like how to find the Maven. And you know. So that's why I choose this approach, so to say. Yep. Uh, how, how do you mean the integration? I'm not sure to follow your question. Uh, they already have the, all those kind of crazy, let's see actually if I can show you, but they have like, they have like Kafka, they have like uh, MQ, RabbitMQ, they have Cassandra, so basically they're all those kind of things. Uh, so, uh, where is the, where is the, yes. So basically they have like, all kind of stuff here. So if you go here on guides, basically you'll get all kind of stuff as the documentation. So basically you have like with the MongoDB, Neo4j, Netflix, O2, RSS, RabbitMQ, Micro Redis. So 
like I said, they really have, like you said, like you have Kafka, Groovy, GraphQL, gRPC. They have all uh, Amazon Web Services. So they really like went as far as, it, at least from my point of view, what the most people do, do actually what, what we, most people actually need, and then just went for that. And I think that's a very good approach because then you, you hit the, the most actually user, user base right, to, right out of the box. Any other question? Or, or I'm out of time because it's going to go in a different way now. Okay, I'm out of time then. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>